Welcome to another episode of the Smart Agency Masterclass. I am your host, Jason Swank, where we believe that if you have the right systems in place, you are going to grow and scale your agency and your business much faster. On today's episode, I have Professor Jeff. He's not really a professor, but he runs a VA virtual assistant company. And he goes over some really good strategies about how you can save time and make your salespeople more effective. You're not gonna wanna miss out on this episode. Listen to it right now. Hey Jeff, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so for those who uh, don't know who you are and what we'll actually be chatting about, tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow. Uh, so I've been a project manager for 10 years, I guess, in IT project management. I've been IT my entire life. Uh, my expertise is around the virtual project management. Um, I used to work for, uh, I used to be the IT director for a school district for five years. And then I moved into project management for the corporate world. Um, and I was leading projects and virtual teams. And then we'd, we'd pull these teams together and drop into hospitals and do like IT infrastructure upgrades and all sorts of stuff. And I started realizing that that was really like my calling. Like my calling was around building virtual teams and uh, getting projects done in this new age of virtualism, I guess. So <laughs> you making up words so, already? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, you know, back in the day, I mean, as a project manager, when we you, when we are utilizing resources, right? People are resources. Uh, that's how I saw it. So I actually didn't know anything about virtual assistants or anything like five years ago. It was just out of a, a need, a necessity of growing my own self and my own business, um, leveraging other people to do certain things. And then I started realizing, oh, I guess people call these virtual assistants. And now I've got to the point to where I've got two offices in the Philippines, 54 team members all over the world. Uh, majority of my team are in the Philippines. Uh, I've got people in South America, Caribbean, India, UK, Australia, and probably about 40 of my team are in the Philippines. So very cool. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Wow. And so a lot of agencies listening and watching, you know, they struggle with, you know, building virtual teams. I think a lot of them do. I mean, a lot of them do it successfully or some struggle with like, well, what should I outsource or what should mm. I use a virtual team for? So let's start off there. What, what should agency owners use a virtual staff for? Um, I'm going to take it backwards a bit. The reason why is because that answer is so, so different for everybody. Um, agencies in general, if you're working in the marketing world, you know, you're trying to acquire new clients. Like that's always your biggest thing, right? Or you're trying to fulfill on what you're already supposed to give to your clients now. And from what I've found is that most agencies get stuck at a point where they can no longer manage other accounts because they're so busy managing their existing accounts, right? So um, I'm a huge cost neutral guy. I don't believe in hiring anyone until it hurts. So what I do first off is uh, I do something with my own clients called the Freedom Plan where I, I basically get all my team members together if, if or if you're a solopreneur, it's you are the marketing agency. You need to get get together, look at what you're doing for your clients, and literally write down everything that you do in your business, right? And um, you know the 9010 life that I promote. This is a kind of a rule concept that I put together about. Um, have you heard of Pareto's principle, the 80/20 rule? No. <laughs> so the 80/20 rule, 1895. I'm going to give you a history lesson. Sweet. Bill, Oh my God! I, let, let me. Uh, rule. I got to sit by that really smart kid in history lesson. Then <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I actually if, like if 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 God came down today and struck me with lightning and said, "From now on, you get to do one thing for the rest of your life," I would totally be a history teacher, no matter the money or whatever else. Like that's what I would love to do. I love history. I oh, know wow. it's nerdy. 
Awesome. But uh, just FYI. All right, educate me. Go, I got you off track of your history lesson. Teach to us, Professor. Yeah, so the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, is about, uh, it's, it's basically this guy uh, back in the day who realized that almost everything in life is classified between something called the trivial many and the vital few. And whether that's the successful people in life or the politicians or whether it's finance people that are, you know, financially stable, um, even down to the level of the things that we do on a day to day basis. And it's really important to make a list of what you do every day, because if you don't understand the most valuable things that you're doing and staying focused on the on the vital few and not worrying about the trivial many, then your life is easily going to get sidetracked. So when it comes to hiring people, I would say look and see what are the most valuable things for you to do in your business, the things that you're providing to your clients, or maybe the things that you're not providing to your clients that could provide the most value. And that's where you start. Gotcha. You know, my the 80-20 rule that I know of is kind of a funny one because I literally, <laughs> me and my wife have this as a side joke, so now all of you know it. But uh, someone will do something stupid, will be like 80%. Because we think 80% of the world is cuckoo and then the other 20% are, are, are normal. And so that's what I thought you were getting at. But one that's, of the, it. That, th that's, that's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that, there you go. Then I've heard of it. And now I know the origination of it. So thanks, Professor Jeff. And, and, and I think, too, is I think a lot of agency owners get into overwhelm, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's why I like you said, you said to make a list. Because whenever I feel overwhelmed or I hear other people overwhelmed, I'm like, dude, make a list. And then what you need to do is literally go down that list and say, which is the highest impact item for the long term, mm -hmm. which is the highest impact for the short term. And then what is low impact? Because what we all do is do the short term ones first, the low impact. And it makes no sense. It's kind of like, you know, hey, yeah, I need to check email and I did these little things that don't add up to much, but I feel better about myself in the short term. <laughs> You know what the truth is about that? And I, I've i done this activity hundreds of times with my clients, hundreds of times. Some clients I've had to do this multiple times with them because they need to be refocused. But um, what I've learned is that if you are being genuine with yourself, and we all have to be honest with ourselves, and you write down the things that you're supposed to accomplish today, like literally just today, and you write down 10 things on a list, you will find that doing one of them, if you just accomplished one of them, one of them will be more valuable than all nine put together. But you know what? We are still stuck in kicking the rocks beneath instead of pushing the big boulder. And the reason is because we've developed habits. Because we've developed habits to do the little trivial things because usually the things that create the most value to you are probably the hardest things to do. And there's something that we go, ah, it's just like that homework when you're in high school and college, like, ah, you know, like Outsourced. you find everything else you want to do except that. Right? Outsource that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I used VAs for my homework. <laughs> yeah, for me personally, I found that the only thing you really can't outsource is, is relationships. So anything in relationships, I think knowing what not to outsource is just as valuable as knowing what to outsource. Um, definitely when it comes to sales teams, man, if you're a marketing agency and you're spending your time on sales, which is hopefully what you're doing, um, uh, so many of my clients I've seen that I've helped have been wasting their time on lead generation. And when I say lead generation, I mean active lead generation, like actually going out and finding contacts, right? Like that's a horrible use of your time. That's a great place to find a Talking VA. Talking about the help. research, right? Yeah, like looking up contacts, yep. you know, going on LinkedIn. Um, I mean, one of the things that we do that's really effective right now is we're taking uh, – we're, we're using sales navigator accounts to really dial in on LinkedIn, uh, sales navigator accounts to dial in like specific demographics for my clients. And then we will have my team basically put together a process for them. We'll work with the client to come up with like a script like, hey, here's an introduction. And then after they connect to us on Facebook, we send out another message saying, hey, thanks for connecting. I'm so and so and I work with such and such and I help entrepreneurs do whatever, right? Whatever. Um, 
and then just that's such a huge time sink like on Facebook or on Facebook and LinkedIn and all these different things we're spending so much time you know chasing wheels right and we're just all over the place so to have a very firm strategy where like your time is dedicated on the most unique abilities that you have which are usually building the relationships and putting together strategies and putting together plans you know, that's one thing that you don't outsource to a virtual assistant. You don't have a virtual assistant come up with a plan. You don't have a virtual assistant uh, come up with a strategy or, or build relationships with your clients. That's what you do. It's usually the most challenging thing to do. What's not challenging is executing the strategy that you put together. So that's what you do. Yeah, I love that you are using it as like an outbound strategy for your clients because you know, I always tell people that they need three different channels in order to really grow their business, right? They need an inbound channel, they need a strategic partnership channel, but you also need an outbound channel, like picking up the phone. And I think a lot of us don't pick up the phone or have a team pick up the phone because they're not targeted and they haven't done the research. But, you know, I never thought about where, and I think I've had friends in the past, you know, do this and it's been really, it worked out really well for them because, you know, rather than them spending all the time, you know, mining the data and figuring all that out, you know, having a virtual assistant able to do that. And then you have this list that's really kind of the, the top. Would you like to grow your agency three times faster? Would you like to work directly with me where you can ask me questions and I can give you the answers that you need so you can grow your agency faster? If so, I want to tell you about the Agency University. We're getting ready to open enrollment again, and you have to request an invite if you go to agency.university. Now, Agency University is an innovative mentorship where you get to work directly with me, and we send you the resources and support you need in order to grow your agency. So if you want to know more, go to agency.university. Sir, of history. Uh, <laughs> I know where you're going with it because, yeah. because, you know, my, so my biggest clients, truth be told, my biggest clients are startups and, um, most startups, they usually have way under staff, right? Mm -hmm. They're usually barely on their first or second seed funding. You know, they're, they're probably, you know, a million dollar, $2 million company. They've probably got like 11 people and like five of them are sales. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah, and they've got like virtual teams building their SaaS products in the back end and whatever else. And um, what's funny is that a lot of my clientele, the the sales teams are really where, you know, per I love that space because it's so easy for me. And by the way, for you agencies out there, this should be so easy for you to sell because most of these businesses pay their salespeople the most, right? Like of everyone in the company, there's two people that get paid the most, the sales team and the CEO, right? That's about it. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, they're like, you know, sub 50,000. But you, if you're looking at a big company, you're looking at a salesperson at like $100,000, $80,000. Um, and if their time is spent four hours a day on finding contacts, when you can use a virtual assistant for $7 an hour, then it's the easiest sell in the world because you say, are you paying your sales guy something that you can have a $7 an hour person do, an account development person who's overseas or whatever and just like dialing stuff in? Because for me, I have, for example, my clients, Domo.com, they're a big data company and they have a great sales team. They have 40 or so people and I have about eight to 10 of my virtual assistants that are geared just to work on their account development and find the right contacts that they need so that their salespeople are actually out there on the phones and they're like contacting them and they're building relationships and they're setting up meetings and stuff and they're not wasting their time trying to find contacts. Yeah. Well, I, I like this model too because a lot of people try to get the whole company like outsourced all of their sales. And mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit much because like you said, it's kind of hard to outsource relationships. And, but if you're, you're having a, a virtual company, mine all that data, set up that perfect criteria for who your perfect prospect is, and then you have a capable and able salesperson. And I say that loosely because uh, <laughs> they're, they're so hard to find. 
Um, they are. You know that, that that's that's why the pay is so good. I mean, a really good sales guy is worth a gold. You know exactly. So, well, this has been great. Is there anything I did not ask you that you think would benefit my audience? I think that something that's really key, whether it's whatever type of agency you are, whether you're doing Facebook ads, marketing, social media, whatever type of agency you are, because I know there's a lot, uh, uh, you know, it's really important that, you know, you focus on what is the most valuable. Um, and you also make sure that the people that are working with you, whether it be in office or virtual, are also focusing on their unique abilities, the things that are doing the most. And going back to Vilfredo Pareto with the 80-20 rule, well, it is not 1895. This is the information age. It is 90-10. And I've literally done this exercise hundreds of times, and I found that if you just genuinely write down what you do every day, you'll find that 10% of those things are, the, are actually what you should be focusing on. So yeah. the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to virtual assistance and delegation and leadership, which is where my kind of expertise is, is make sure that if you are in a situation where you're basically stuck trying to do everything yourself because no one else knows how to do it, now is a great time to invest because you're going to do the work anyway, right? Like right now, you're stuck doing it. So you might as well use a program. You can use a program like Tiny Take or ScreenFlow, depending on what kind of computer you have, um, and just start recording the things that you do and start documenting it because the first step of not doing everything yourself is to show other people how to do it. Yeah, I uh, I did that when Stacy joined and literally she was up and running the day she started because literally mm -hmm. I had all these videos and I basically created categories. I'm like, all right, account management this, project management this, podcast this. And you know, it's, and I guess you gotta kind of like when you're filming and it's cool too. It's cool practice because as an agency owner and you guys are trying to build business, you need to get in front of video. Video is real important. And just by doing it internal, it will start making you more comfortable at doing video. So I, I love that strategy. Yes. It works very, very well. Um, yeah. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for coming on. How can people reach you if they want to um, hook up with you? Uh, you can just go to uh, jeffjhunter.com or you can, you can search it assistant company is the VA staffer. Um, we're all over the place. If you guys want to learn more about the 910 life and, and staying focused, important. I've actually put a webinar together. I'm going live this Thursday. Um, it's 9010life.com, but it really shows you how to be an effective virtual leader or a boss. Um, it shows you some ways you can actually hire people virtually. And uh, thirdly, how to train them really quickly, just kind of like what you said earlier, Jason, about putting together some videos and things like that. I call them freedom recipes because it's really the only way to escape from yourself. So I appreciate, I appreciate uh, being here. And um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. Just put my, uh, my Twitter, my Facebook, um, jhunter101. Awesome. Well, guys, um, make sure you guys take action. I, I would like to see all of you. Your action step is to make a list of all the crap you do all day long and then literally start ranking them and figuring out what can you say no to creating your no list, but also what can you outsource to a VA or someone on your team? Because as a agency CEO, you can't be doing everything. And if you like this episode, make sure you comment, let us know. And if you're not on the email list, shame on you. And, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you want to get rid of all this shame that I am literally throwing at you and all this bad karma, you got to go to swank.it. Swank it. <laughs> and, I love it. And I will send you all the agency tips each week so you don't miss out on any good, you know, great episodes like Professor Jeff's episode right now. So, all right. <laughs> till next time.